Hi, this is DW Berman, and uh, a little while ago I made this video on how negative edge values now work in perspective in Lightwave, which is pretty fantastic. And I got a comment from David Maloney saying, Thanks a million for that tip. It'll save tons of time and polys in creating renderings for space frames and trusses we build. And he notes you can also convert the points at the intersections to one-point polygons, and they will render as balls or nodes or connectors. So... We're going to do that. Uh, I also got a tip from Jim Talley on a way to quickly make these two-point polygon meshes, and as a result, they also make one-point polygons, so we'll go into that too. So I'm going to attempt to very quickly build something like one of these high-tension or high-voltage power transmission tower things. Um, I'm going to try to keep it simple and quick because I don't want to spend all day working on a tower like this. So, uh, here we are in Modeler, so let me just hit X to make a box. And I'm in the Box tool now, and I will drag out a box. And how high do I want the box to be? Well, we'll say 30 meters. I'm just kind of guessing. We'll make the width uh, 8 meters, and the depth 8 meters. And we'll hit Enter, hit F3 to rest on ground, and hit A to fit it all into the view. Now, it's not exactly what I want, so, um, but that gives us our general scale. So, let's just hit delete to get rid of it, and again, X, N for numeric, if your numeric panel's not up. And this time I'll just move the uh, thing up there. So, uh, let's add some segments to this. Could have done this in the first place, but, you know, now I can actually see what I'm doing. So, uh, we'll do... I'll do two segments on the X and the Z and a bunch more on the Y and uh, I'm gonna go to my stretch tool and I'm gonna change my fall off to linear I'm gonna right click and drag and you can see this is the effect of my uh, scaling operation I actually want it to be the opposite way so I'll click on this one over here because I want it the scaling to be stronger at the top than at the bottom. And I might just play with these a little bit just to yeah, make it more like that. Now when I with my pointer in the middle of the uh, universe, I'm just gonna drag in here. Mm, I don't like that. It's too wavy. So maybe I'll just keep it at that. Let's go to a linear preset. There we go. So, if you're following along, I'm sorry for that. So there we go. There's my basic tower shape. I do want to alter this a little bit, so I'll just turn fall off off. And that way we just have a little interest there. Things are done a little differently on this tower. Um, let's grab these middle points here and here, but not the corners. And let me scale up. Or move up. What did I want to do? That's probably not going to work. Let's basically let's grab all these little points here in the middle. something like that. But let me... There we go. Just lasso all those and drag them up. That gives us our space that we need for our tower. And... Here we have our cross sections. We'll just move those up. And scale them in so they're in line with the rest of the building. So there we have a rather rocket-looking shape. Let's move that up. Just tweaky, tweaky, tweaky. Um, again, I'd probably take more time laying these out if I were actually doing this for a real project, but uh, I'm not. So let's uh, 
make two tower trust things. So I'm gonna let's see, come over on the side here. I'll just click those four points there in that order. Hit P, and that gives me a polygon there. And now I'm going to hit E for the extender or whatever it's called. And then I hit T for move, and I'll just move it out. Hey, that didn't work. Grr! Oh well. B for bevel. I'll bevel it out. And that didn't work. Probably because of the odd shape. Okay, Shift E for extender. There you go. Sorry about that. There's probably a lot of extra geometry there, and it's all messed up. So let's hit M for merge to merge all the points, and Shift I to unify the polygons. And let's see if I can. It doesn't really matter, but I'm going to flip all these anyway, so they're all facing out. F for flip. There you go. Okay, now since I'm using light wave, let me hit T, sh control T to, uh, yeah, move that point in. Okay, now that I'm using light wave 11.5, I'm going to use some of the new tools. And uh, let's see, what are those new tools? Where are they? Detail, edit edges, okay. Let's see, right click to make an edge loop, left click and drag to move it in and out. So there we go. We're just creating an edge loop and moving it into place. And creating an edge loop and moving it into place. So there we have our edges. I don't know if I really need this. That loop there, so I just shift clicked on it. And that got rid of that center line there on that part of the truss. Okay, I kind of want to do something similar. Um, to the top here. So hit uh, enter to drop the tool and control G to go to point selection mode. Click that point, that point, and that point, and hit P, and there we go. There's our triangle again. We'll do the same thing, only this time it'll probably work. E for the whatever it's called, tool, extend, I guess, T to move, holding down control and dragging, to control constrains it, but apparently I didn't hit control in time. I'm just going to move this point back in. Not that it really worked the first time, but anyway. Uh, let's see, should I do the same thing? Yeah, I'll do the same thing. I'll go to the edit edges, Right click, right click, right click, and there we go, we have triangles. Okay, now uh, let's select these points that I had over here. Shift V for mirror. I'm trying to get the pointer in the middle of the screen. I guess it is, apparently. Okay, so I've mirrored the towers across, and uh, or the cross beams across. And let me hit Shift T for triple. So that triples our polygons. Um, I might want to just delete a couple of these just for visual interest. That's just using the delete key. I'd probably want that support there, but not necessarily need it there. I'm just trying to think how these things might actually be built, but I'm not an engineer. And I really don't care for this in this case. Don't think I need the middle ones there. 
And uh, in this case, I'll just use a shift K for the knife, and I'm just going to knife across here to give us some more segments on the legs. And let's triple those. So shift T, that'll triple everything that's not been tripled. Okay, so here's our basic geometry. Uh, next step, and this is where Jim, <laughs> oh, we'll save it. That was because I have a habit of hitting S at certain times. And I, yeah, accidentally had an extra character in there and accidentally saved an increment, but that's okay. Okay, Jim Talley's suggestion for making the two-point polygon cage was to use the strand maker in uh, the setup tab under fiber effects. So I just clicked the strand maker tool once. And there you see we have a background layer now. And the background layer is made up of two point polygons and one point polygons. So how about that? So I'm in edge selection mode. And if I select this edge, you'll see it's selected one. Hmm. Well, sometimes you actually end up with duplicates of uh, polygon. Or, oh, I'm selecting edges. I need to be selecting polygons. Duh. OK, polygon mode. Now, you can see I'm still only selecting one polygon per thing. OK, well, on some tests I did, uh, you actually ended up with multiple uh, polygons on the same points. So I just do Shift I to merge the polygons if there happen to be any there. OK, uh, let me hit W to bring up my polygon statistics panel. I'm going to click on one vertex polygons. I'm going to cut. I'm going to paste them into the third layer. I'm going to hit F7. That brings up my layers panel. And we'll just double click on the third layer and name it uh, joints. And on the second layer, we'll call it uh, truss one. And uh, kind of what I want to do is I kind of want to make these outside lines uh, thicker than the inside lines. So like the main structural pieces, I want to be thicker than the rest. So let me just, I guess, select everything and then deselect the stuff I don't want, which is pretty much everything in the middle. Actually, even these towers don't need or the cross sections, and I accidentally deselected everything. Fantastic! All right, so let's lasso around those, shift-click to reselect those. Lasso around those to deselect. I'm holding down shift, so it's accidentally selecting. It's too early to be doing this stuff, apparently. I've not had my caffeine today. Bit of sugar, but not caffeine. Okay. Now, let's just drag up through here, the middle, and deselect all the interior point polygons. And I do that on this other side, too. So just the outside edges are the really thick ones. Well, they're not thick yet, but they will be. OK. Whew. Cut. Paste. F7 so we can name it. Trust 2. And I don't want the first layer showing up in layout, so I'll just unclick the button in the little eyeball column and hit save and send object to layout. Okay, there's my truss tower stuff. So let me hit the scene editor and I'll just make sure things are parented. I want everything to be parented to truss one. Why? I don't know. That's just an arbitrary choice on my part. Okay. VPR mode. There we go. Looks pretty spiffy already, but let's uh, move the camera in. And rotate it, and there we go. If I zoom in close, you'll see that it's still, they're just, you know, one pixel long, wide lines, basically. But that's not what we want out of this. 
we want something else. So let's go to our object properties. And trust 2 is going to be our thick one. So let's go to edges. And let's turn. Let's do particle line thickness and just do negative, say, 5 inches. Do negative 0.2 meters. And let's see, on truss 1, we'll do negative 0.15 meters. Nope, that's too thick. 0.1, nah, 0.05, there we go. And let's see, joints is going to be tricky because, well, maybe not. We'll do negative 0.15. There you see we have a connection at the various points. So there we go. There is our tower. The modeling took a little longer than I thought it would, but you know the texture or the line setup in layout doesn't take long at all. Um, you can, of course, add more geometry to it. This will look better with a sky of some kind. Backdrop options. There's our sky. Um, whoa. OK. I don't know what I'm doing now. Let's see. What else did I want to do with this? I can change the surface on it. I didn't apply a specific surface, so it's just the uh, default. Uh, I'll do 20% reflection, drop diffuse, and uh, yeah, whatever. You get the basic idea. There's our quick and easy tower in uh, Lightwave 11.5 using uh, Strand Maker to actually make the cage after once you know once we've built the polygons anyway whew, sorry this has been a longer video than usual um i went through a lot of stuff though so hopefully you didn't mind and hopefully you're able to pick things up uh, because i went through them rather quickly so um wanted to point out there are some great tutorials for sale on liberty 3d some of them by me some of them by other great artists um and also subscribe to this channel if you like tutorials and uh, for Lightwave specifically and sometimes just test renders because I don't always get around to making a new tutorial every week. So uh, thanks for watching and I hope you have a great whatever time period you're in right now. So uh, talk to you later.